there, I think there'd be a lot of value in digging into these composite metrics deeper. Yeah, so. I just started the recording, by the way, everyone, just so you know. Cool. So we're all here. Um, so I think we've got two item, two proposed items for the agenda for today. Um, I propose we talk about um, our desired messaging and outcomes for uh, the conference in a couple of weeks. Um, Georg thought it would this would be a good idea to just take stock of where we're at and and talk about next steps. Um, any other proposals? Composite metrics. Excellent. So what shall we start with? We can work our way down. Let's do it. So for um, the San Diego show, we've got two sessions, I believe, that relate to value. One is Open Source Summit North America, which is meant to be um, a panel to talk about um, chaos uh, metrics. And then our other session is at ChaosCon itself. I believe that's a that's a 20 minute session and we can use that for whatever purpose we think is best. I'm, I'm trying to find the links I can put them in the agenda. Oh, by the way, in the past, we put on the website a list of all chaos sessions, chaos related sessions uh, at conference that we were going to. Um, I don't know if, how valuable that is, if anyone is really looking at that. But we can put that together again. Say what? What, is, what are you talking about? In the past, we had on the website a list of all the sessions that Chaos members had with links to the session with time. Oh, at, open source, at the bigger conference. Yeah, at the, at the bigger conference, right. So I don't know if it's valuable to produce that again and have that. I don't know if anyone ever looked at it. No idea. Yeah, I don't know. Is there a website for ChaosCon itself? Yeah, it's on the Chaos website. Yeah. Put the link in the chat. So for me, the chaos con 20 minutes, I mean, you're going to have an audience of folks who are just inherently interested about this stuff. That's the hope anyway. And so, you know, in 20 minutes, a lot for me, I think it's about kind of driving the conversation forward as to what value can be in the future. So what are the important things to look at with respect to value? I know that 
value has had an interest in the chaos community for a while from a variety of different people. Um, so I think it might be an opportunity to, to maybe make a few of those connections a little bit stronger. Um, I think the open source summit North America one will require a little bit more conversation about um, what chaos is and how value slots into that. That I think you can get away with not talking about at ChaosCon. Um, probably talking about the existing set of three metrics that are out there. I agree that at ChaosCon we can skip the whole introducing chaos part. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I, I just put the description of the session in our Google Doc. Okay. So part of it is describing the, or we are promising to describe the metrics that we included in the release. And then also introduce ideas we have for further metrics. And I think we can cover those two items in 10 minutes and have 10 minutes open for discussion on what other people think, feedback, how they consider value of open source projects, what they would like to see. Yeah, usually chaos cons are, you're talking about chaos con, right, Georg? Chaos con, yes. Um, it's a usually a pretty chatty group. So I would just you can get a conversation going pretty easily. So um, as far as Open Source Summit North America. Are we going to have a moderator for that? Typically, these panels have a moderator that has a set of stock questions. Because it's a panel. Who's who's the MC for the uh, yeah, uh, kind of kind of general? Don. I think some someone had volunteered to do that. Was it Don? Maybe, maybe we could request her to moderate yeah. for Open Source Summit North America. I'm talking about oh, the bigger one. Oh, I'm sorry. So, because the bigger one's a panel, it's a 40 minute panel. Yeah. So, typically, those have a moderator, you know, that introduce everybody and then they have a series of questions that could actually, it's almost like an interview that could generate enough discussion for 40 minutes, but if the audience has questions, they can kind of facilitate that as well. I mean, I'm happy to moderate it. It's fine. I would leave Georg, Sean, Malvika, and Andy as kind of the panel members. Yeah. So I just put the description in our Google Doc. Okay. I'll just put myself down. Unless anybody else wants to, I mean. Type. Uh, I, I might put my hand up for that if you guys thought that was useful because there's so much I don't know about the project that asking a bunch of questions of y'all about John, it. John, you're really hard to hear. Sorry, can you guys hear me now? A little better. A little better. Uh, sorry, I'm in the car. 
I was just going to okay. say, I'm, I, I might be a little bit interested in that, just because uh, just asking questions about the stuff, since there's so many things I still don't know, sounds kind of fun. Um, just if you need a, an alternate or fallback. So would you want to ask questions about the Chaos Project overall, or just honing in on value for the panel? Uh, is it, it, it a, so is the is the 40 minute panel just about value or about chaos overall? It's, sure value, about it's on the value basis. metrics. It's on the value metrics. I, yeah. I think that would be super interesting. Um, I don't know, I might, I might throw together a, a, like a question list and see what you guys think. Um, yeah, do you have any other? I, I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually writing some questions right now. So, so well, John, I would go. If it's, if it's something that you really want to do, then I'm not worried about it. But if it's, if not, I, I put my hand up. So John, I'll just say I'd welcome your uh, participation very much. And uh, I think um, uh, if you write up some questions, definitely send them along and, um, and that'd be great. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just write up some stuff and see what y'all think and if it's valuable and the direction y'all want to go. Okay. We can choose from there. So, so John, last time I remember we talked about you coming to San Diego is you wanted to come to Chaos Con, but not the big open source summit in North America, right? Yes. I believe that I am getting a ticket to the wider conference uh, courtesy of Linux Foundation. I've been working on that since the so I will, I will find out the next week or so if that's actually going to happen. Excellent. Then you can participate in the big... Yeah, that would, be, that would be fun. Yeah, then you will be at the panel, hopefully. Excellent. So, so typically, in my experience for something like this, um, you know, what you're trying to do as a group is to register interest with the audience to figure out who you know is interested and then you know present them with some sort of a call to action and the call to action could be hey you know check out our website or get involved on our weekly calls or or you know whatever we think it ought to be um, d is that a good way to, to think about um, chaos con and open source Summit North America, or is there some other way that you want to think about engaging the audience? Is, is the discussion for us to learn from the audience? Is, is that the outcome? What are your thoughts? Um, so with respect to Open Source Summit North America, I, with the panel, I think if we can drive it with a series of questions that I'm jotting down here, and mm -hmm. these are just totally off the top of my head, Answering those questions should help the audience kind of understand what's going on in the value working group. Um, you know, I think one of the things is um, maybe this next question that I'm writing, like what are the, the cases or scenarios that we're missing? This could be directed at the audience. Right. And so this could, I mean, part of moderating this could be a series of questions kind of aimed at the panel and then a series of connections that try to connect the audience with the panel. So I think in part it's about, I think it's both things you've talked about, Andy, in part trying to connect with the audience. Okay. Thrive engagement, but at the same time trying to educate the audience as to what's going on. Mm -hmm. Do, do we happen to have any uh, data or intelligence on who the people in the audience are? And, like, you know, how many folks in there are from the open source program offices? How many people are contributing? Yeah. Do we know? People on the Linux Foundation site can express interest. So I don't know, Georg, when you were looking at that, had you seen any bubbles, any circles of heads of people that were on there? Because you can. I don't think anyone signed up. Yet. Okay. You can actually see people expressing an interest in particular sessions, but honestly, that's a far cry from whether or not they're going to be an audience or not. So that, that's probably something that we should be meeting out probably over the next couple weeks, right? About the sessions that we're having for chaos at the local conference and trying to get some traction on that. 
I suspect this will be fairly, I'm hoping, fairly well attended. It's on a Thursday. So the last day is Friday. So we're still kind of in the heart of. No, I, I might not be able to make that then. I think I'm only there for like when? on this Tuesday or Wednesday. It's Tuesday. Yeah, I think I'm only there for Tuesday and I'm flying back Wednesday morning. Okay. Sorry about that. Well, that's fine. Um, so here's some, anybody wants to add a question. I mean, we can work these out a little bit in more detail, but kind of at the bottom of that first page. I'll have to take a look at it a little bit since I'm driving. Okay, it's just in the Google Doc, the, the minutes for today's meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so honestly, with if we, I mean, if we have what do we have two something along the lines of two, four, five questions at the moment, with four people, three people on the panel, we're, we're, we'll approach forty minutes pretty quickly. Yeah, that's that's what I've noticed as well. It doesn't take that many questions through a session. No, if everybody responds to the question and then an audience member chimes in, oof. I mean, that's like eight minutes right out of the gate. Yep. Okay. Oh, Andy, I see that when we um, submitted this session, we also included Novika. Is she coming? Do you know? I think she's not. Um, I'm going to call her today, though, and just confirm. And if she doesn't come, then we'll we'll find uh, uh, an alternative. Okay. Okay. This is looking like a good start. Uh, in other uh, events like this, um, we've had some sort of a meetup. We've we've invited people to you know show up, let's say to a bar or a restaurant for you know a group dinner or or you know some sort of informal social thing. Uh, would that be something that would make sense here or not? I think we talked about this for Chaos Con. Because we end at five, mm -hmm. and so I think the. Do you remember talking about this, Georg, as part of the? That we would like say nothing I, official. Yeah. But we're all going to join. We're all going to head over to. I think though the problem is there's a one session afterwards. Like after five, there was one session, and Dawn mentioned that she has to go to that session, and like people are flexible on that. Yeah, like there's another fairly large event. Yes. occurring that evening. So I think we put it out there, but I mean, I'm certainly available on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got no problem with that. Okay, so maybe we'll think about it this week and uh, next week um, we'll have a proposal for what that might be. Maybe it's just an informal get together at a, at a local restaurant or, 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 or something of that nature. I think so. Yep. We can, yeah, so what day are you thinking about doing this? On Thursday after this, for summit meeting or on chaos con after the chaos event one or the other i was thinking tuesday we could we could simply do it on tuesday so the number one person that i would consider for finding good places is don foster because she has her 
uh, secret lists of restaurants that are really good. <laughs> so maybe we can ask her if she can recommend something. Yeah. And probably be better if it was um, not, if the gathering was not specific value group, but. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I think we'll, I'll ask Don to put the call out. Okay. In our closing remarks. Yeah, maybe even in, uh, send out an email earlier and even put it on the schedule saying that we are planning this. Yeah, an informal get together at whatever. Yep. So I'm going to send an email now to Dawn to ask if she can recommend something. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't want to go through the personally, somebody else can, but I don't want to go through the process of calling a restaurant and reserving a table or anything like that. I think we right. just. Yeah, if there was a, if there was just a, a call to say, hey, gather here at this at this bar, or this restaurant, you know, maybe you'd get a dozen people to show up, yep. and that that might be a really nice networking opportunity for folks. Okay, so I think um, this agenda item is yep. good. We can move on to the next. Check. Roger. Okay, status and direction and next steps. So to me, there's a couple of things. One is obviously identifying um, metrics for a version 1.5 release that would probably occur in February I don't know when FOSDEM is, but I'm guessing it's February. Mm -hmm. So whatever those might be. Um, I also think that I know that kind of on the agenda has been um, getting a working implementation of uh, some of the tools in chaos to actually show these metrics in practice. I think a critically important thing for allowing people to see these things, it's one thing to talk about them in a markdown file. It's another thing to see them yep. in practice and allow people to play with them. Mm -hmm. So that's important to me. That remains important to me. Yeah, is there, I actually had a question about that. Is there any, I don't know if there's any like budget or any points to running a, or if there already is standing up a, uh, like a demo system that we could have run or have Linux Foundation host for us so that folks could log in and play with something? Well, um, so we, I mean, yeah, so this has come up before. So um, I assume you're talking about like an instance of either Grimoire Lab or Augur that basically shows all the deployed metrics that can be shown on those tools. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and maybe something that even lets people build their own little dashboard as a demo. It's not so I, I don't know. Um, I think that's a great idea. Uh, I know so, Elk is not cheap or easy to, <laughs> to operate. But. Yeah, I'll let Georg kind of talk about it from a if you have thoughts on this, Georg, from a Grimoire Lab perspective? So, from a Grimoire Lab perspective, Petrucci is working on a tool or a platform right now that is exactly that. Um, okay. Called Coltron. So, Petrucci has had this for a while, and we're currently reworking it, um, putting it 
we're going to be open with the Elasticsearch database and using Kubernetes and all the new fancy technology, um, and also integrating the chaos metrics um, with the platform. So that is under works, and Jesus is the project manager for that because he has funds through some research grant um, and he has currently two developers working on this tool. So you can go to, um, I think it's alphacauldron.io. Let me check if it, It's a public thing, kind of like the dashboards? Gear? Right. Okay. Right. And right now it supports two, uh, three data sources. Um, but we all know that um, Grimoire Lab can support a lot more. Yeah. And those, are, those, those will be added over time. So there is a public facing instance to use Grimoire Lab like that. Um, on a similar note at the Leadership Summit, I was talking with, um, what's his name from the badging program? David. David Wheeler. Yeah. And he also expressed interest in having a platform and even volunteering to run and maintain it if there is funds involved. So that's also an option. Okay. Have funds for it. I mean, one option too is like, um, I mean, we obviously have community bridge. I mean, it's not something we could solve here, but, um, you know, Georg, you know, the journal of open source software. Yeah. Um, so, um, our fund is pretty transparent on what that costs to run. And so yeah. it's not a huge expense. So, I mean, that would be another option, uh, something to possibly pursue with the board. If it's yeah, not a very transparent cost structure and ask for money. Yeah, to actually support something like this. I mean, if it's not a <laughs> terribly expensive endeavor. Um, I know that we're going to be taking a look at, obviously, continued Sloan funding. But, and I mean, that could easily be part of it. But as you know, that's not a long-term solution. Yeah. So one, one question I have is, would it be useful to have a, a sort of a more loosely connected uh, steering committee? Or, um, a, a steering committee of open source program office managers, just to periodically review our work and give us feedback, maybe, maybe once a quarter. You know, we, maybe we would do something like write up a little report um, you know, ask for people's involvement where, you know, their, their name goes on like a, a steering committee or, or a review board or, or, you know, something of that nature. A uh, small number of people, four to six. Um, and, you know, the, the purpose of that might be uh, to build uh, networks into industry to, to, um, increase the credibility of the value group by, by you know, having association with, um, with, with real practitioners in the field, um, to get live feedback from real practitioners rather than, you know, just our own opinions, sort of, you know, as academics, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah, and I actually, I like the idea beyond just a value as well. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, the first thing that came to mind is obviously there's the to-do group, which is basically just that. <laughs> it's a much larger group than what you're talking about, you know, four to five. Mm -hmm. um, but perhaps this could be a conversation that could be approached at Open Source Summit North America. Right. You know? So that, that could be a call to action. We could say, hey, we're doing this thing, and oh, by the way, you know, uh, we are taking nominations for people to join our steering committee. It's, it's going to have, you know, a, a loose involvement. We're not expecting weekly input, but we do want your feedback. 
And, you know, we want your views as a member of industry as to what is the value of our work? You know, the value, you know, what is the impact of our, of our work? Um, I mean, maybe it's even something that just kind of aligns with the releases. You know, yeah. it's, it's just twice a year that during comment periods, we say these are the metrics that we're releasing. Yeah. <laughs> what, are your, what are your thoughts? So that could be great. You know, just something that's that's lightweight from the point of view of the participant, but but something where you know we're we're starting to build out our network into industry, yeah. So that people know what we're up to and and have a little bit more investment in it, other than just checking out the website from time to time. Yep. Yeah. Has their own metrics recommendation metrics um, materials and stuff. I, I don't I haven't kept up on what they currently have, but they the are to the to do group, yeah. So because the, the to do group is the collection of open source program officers, um, they built out best practices around open source program offices and I think metrics is a big topic that they also have an opinion on. So partnering with them would be Great, and I know pretty much everyone on in in the to do group is aware of the chaos project. So yeah. making it a little bit more formal by inviting them to be on a review committee or something would be great. So there's um I'm going to share this. Um, I think this is the one. So there's. So I'm going to put this in the chat here. There's this. Yep, that's what I was thinking about. I thought they, did they make a reference to the Bacurgia? I thought they did. Could, could you please put that link in the um, minutes doc too so I can review it? Yes. Bit? I'd love to go read on that. Thank you. There, done. So, oh, there, yeah, so there's a Petergia dashboard. You see it there? Um, Actually, if you go back, I'm sorry, go to this page. So there's the, go to that one. See it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. They do have the Petrochia dashboard in there. But I think I've been through this. In fact, I know I have. Um, I think we're capturing a lot of these things, like code documentation. They have general things like how welcoming the community is. Yeah. Yeah, it would be good if we join them and have an alliance with them, some kind of. Um, I, I can, I'll talk to some, I know some folks. I mean, even, I, Dawn's on the to-do group and I think Brian Prophet is as well. So, isn't he? I don't know about Brian. Okay, I, mean, I could be wrong. Yeah, you know what? I I gave you the list yeah. of this. Do you know? Yes, I'm just uh, posting the member list, yeah. sending you all the link. I was talking to Gil at OSCON. Yeah. Yeah. I also know the To Do Group has been working on some DNI stuff. So yeah, I think metrics is uh, something that the to-do group clearly cares about and reaching out to them to form a relationship between chaos and to-do group would be um, is a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I hate 
implicating efforts. So if there are folks at the to do group that are thinking about whether it's DNI or evolution or value, I hate for one group to be thinking about it and then <laughs> chaos to also be thinking about it independently of one another. It makes sense for us to all be at the same table. Yep. Okay. Another, another question I have is, are there any academics that we can think of that, that have a focus on the economics of open source or the economics of software development that, that we could reach out to, to get maybe a little bit more of, a, of an economic um, point of view into our group? I mean, we're all, we're all, all of us, are more or less software people. And it might be interesting to involve somebody in the group who wasn't a software person, but who was more of a, an expert in work efficiency or labor efficiency. So one of the, one of the keynotes at ChaosCon is Yana Gallus. Mm -hmm. She's an economist from UCLA. Right. So I mean, there's... Okay, so that'd be, that'd be something. Yeah. So the academic side, it's always tricky because um, from an under, from an undergraduate, from a pre-tenure perspective, it is a publisher parish model and getting academics to engage in projects long-term is a, there has to be a, <laughs> there has to be a, a paper payout in it. So that's, it's a tricky balance of trying to convince people that this is an effort that can serve that master as well. So maybe another way to get at that, that there might be, and, and, and by the way, I'm not aware of anybody who does this, but you know, there might be consulting companies that go out and do con, like workforce consulting with large organizations who think about salaries who, who, who come up with hiring strategies, you know, things of that nature. Uh, I'll do some thinking on that because, okay. because my, own, my own point of view is, you know, we're very software centric yep. in our perspective. And since we're the value group, I think it would be good to, to, you know, inject a little bit more of an economic thinking or a labor cost thinking or business competitive thinking into what we do. And exactly how to do that, I'm not sure. I agree, and I think if that that could be cracked open a little bit, I think there's a trem tremendous amount of interest. If you can start assigning any sort of dollar component anywhere in this chain um, that can be consistently and repeatably um, delivered, right? Oh my goodness. Um, so. Let, uh, so That's let's, what uh, let me... Toby, Toby was very interested in, um, and he... Um, Who is this? Uh, Toby Lange. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and he gave me this, uh, this uh, idea where he said, companies have this perception that a patent has like a million dollar value for the company. No one knows why a patent is worth a million dollars to the company, but everyone kind of has this assumption. And participating in open source, we have not, we don't have a dollar value that people have in their head that they associate mm -hmm. with it. And getting there would be a big win. Oh my goodness, that'd be huge. Yeah. Because I've told you right now, I, I think I've told you that still the same argument I hear as well. You know, everybody else is doing it, so <laughs> there must be a rationale. There must be an. I mean, there's there's obviously the the saving of developer time. I mean, that's obviously the big one. Yeah. That you don't have to have a fully staffed development team if you work in in the open source space. Yeah, not reinventing the wheel, speed of innovation, all those. Yeah. yeah. Well. Long answer, Andy. Point well taken. Yes. <laughs> I've shared the list of uh, to-do members and their contact emails. Okay.
Oh, okay. Okay. Um, a big group. Okay. Maybe just, just one last uh, question on the subject. Are there any changes that we would like to make in our group dynamic? Or how do we feel about the energy level? How do we feel about the involvement? Should we be talking more frequently, less frequently? Um, just any, any impressions on that front, just in terms of how we operate as a group? Um, so personally, I, I think the involvement, if I look across all the working groups, they're all about this size, to be honest with you. Um, there's obviously usual suspects that appear across the working groups, but fundamentally it seems to be the state of affairs for all working groups right now with about six to seven folks appearing pretty regularly in the meetings. Um, I do think, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, uh, I do think we should be bi-weekly. Yeah, so in terms of the cadence, I don't, the bi-weekly would be helpful for me or bi-monthly, however you <laughs> interpret your, <laughs> interpret that. Um, so I have an opinion on weekly by weekly yeah from uh, the perspective of someone who is very involved in chaos reducing the number of meetings is good from a perspective of someone coming to chaos as an outsider who is not familiar with the cadence and so on it's much easier to connect if there is a meeting every week because then you're not like is it this week is it next week that's true that's true, but we have a weekly meeting for a journal group, which can in, uh, include uh, include all the newcomers. And for working group, we can have alternate week. The other reality is that we don't have that many people just dropping in on a weekly basis. So if we reduced it to biweekly, I don't think we would lose anyone really. So those are just two demons battling in my head. I agree. I mean, even to that point, when I'm putting together that weekly newsletter, the bi-weekly ones are the hardest ones to figure out when they meet, <laughs> to, be, to be honest with you. Every other one, I can just look a week ahead and drop that date in. Yeah. But the, the bi-weeklies are a little bit trickier. But it, it seems, you know, honestly, it seems to work for evolution at this point. It seems to work for common at this point. Those are the two others that are bi-weekly. Yeah. And I think from an energy perspective, coming only every other week kind of forces us to bring more game to the meetings because if we miss one, then it's a full month until we have the next. Yeah. So maybe switching to bi-weekly would be nice. I would vote for bi-weekly, at least at the moment. I mean, all your points are well taken, Georg, too. But. Okay. Any other any other thoughts just on our work process or or organization things of that nature? No, I'm good. I, well, actually, yes. Um, so now that we have that, John has put together the social media guide. Um, I think it would be nice for somebody from the value group to be able to tweet on behalf of the value group. So Andy, I don't know if that's up your alley, but I can, I, I'll do it. Sounds okay. Good. I mean, it can be super simple. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'll do it. Um, I know I owe, I know I owe some sample tweets too. Yeah. But just, I don't know. It'd just be nice to kind of, I think from every working group have a person kind of leading that charge. Sure. So, so I'll just, I'll just follow the example that I see other people set in terms okay. of frequency and content. Okay. Okay. Okay, Andy, I'm going to send you an invite to a tweet deck. Okay. Um, so that you get access to the Twitter account.
So honestly, like this is all kind of related to the weekly cadence of meetings too, as we were kind of, we've been increasing with the chaos weekly newsletter and pushing this uh, social media stuff forward. You know, I think it, I think it's great. It's a little bit more of an outreach component as well. So, right. Um, I would suggest too, that if we're going to meet in two weeks, that maybe we start thinking about the metrics that we actually want to put forward for version 1.5. So maybe everybody bring one forward. We may not work on them all, but And these can, I think, be identified just from personal interest or things that we may already know exist or have been advanced in Augur or in Grimoire Lab. You know what I mean? Things may already, there, there might be some low fruit I'd like to put that on as an action item for next time. Sounds good. So we've got eight minutes. Um, shall we skip the discussion of parameterized metrics and, and um, just talk about uh, action items for our next meeting? Yeah, I mean, because maybe those, actually maybe the composite parameterized metrics is actually what somebody brings forward. Next meeting. Next meeting. Yes. Yeah, one thing that I've seen work really well since we we're talking about how we work is in the Google Doc to have action items and to review those action items at the beginning of the next meeting. Um, that seems to always be a good forcing function to make sure we have someone responsible for getting work done and to follow up and see that the work is completed. Those are good. Oh, and maybe um, maybe I'll give another action item. Actually, when would our next meeting be? 16th, like the Friday before chaos count. Yeah, I'm on vacation that week. Are you? Okay. That's true for all chaos meetings that week. I will not find that too. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Cheers. Thanks. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Bye.